Welcome. Thank you all for joining us for this unprecedented online commencement ceremony at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. We here at UNO have been eager for this moment to recognize and celebrate the achievements of our graduates. We salute your talents and your perseverance, signs of your true maverick spirit. Now, as members of our UNO family, we all gather under these extraordinary circumstances to celebrate with you. We will first begin our ceremony with the presentation of the colors and the singing of the national anthem by UNO music major Aaron Lawrence. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Greetings. My name is Sasha Kopp, and I have the honor of serving as Senior Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at UNO. I'm pleased to welcome you to the University of Nebraska at Omaha's May 2020 Commencement Ceremony. Thank you for joining us, albeit virtually, today. For 112 years, UNO has served as a point of access for excellence in higher education. We're proud to be a premier metropolitan university relentlessly dedicated to our mission of being student-centered, academically excellent, and engaged with our community and our world. We are mavericks, independent thinkers, explorers, risk-takers, and today we congratulate you, our graduating students, who embody this spirit. We're confident that you will continue to innovate, to push boundaries, and strive for success in whatever you do. At this time, I would like to thank our administration, the vice chancellors who oversee business, finance, operations, student success programs, athletics, and community relations, our staff who help UNO operate on campus and online, and our faculty whose scholarship, teaching, and mentorship provide a world of opportunities for our students. You have all worked tirelessly to ensure our students have been able to continue their academic pursuits during this uncertain time. We would not be here today for these graduates without your unwavering dedication. Now it is my pleasure to introduce UNO's Chancellor, Dr. Jeffrey P. Gold. Dr. Gold took on leadership of our university in May of 2017, in addition to his responsibilities while serving as Chancellor of the University of Nebraska Medical Center and chairing the board of UNMC's Principal Clinical Care System Partner, Nebraska Medicine. With both deep knowledge and broad experience in higher education and healthcare, Dr. Gold is a tireless advocate for advancing UNO's Metropolitan University mission of access, excellence in education, and service to our community. Please help me in welcoming Chancellor Jeffrey P. Gold. Thank you for joining us in this celebration of the class of 2020's hard work, dedication, and perseverance. Graduates, 
we are honored to recognize your achievements today and to share this transformational moment with you. In doing so, we also recognize that these milestones are shared by the family, the friends, and the loved ones who walked alongside you throughout this journey. Please take this opportunity to extend a special thanks to these people, both present with you today and in your hearts, those who have helped make today a reality. The University of Nebraska at Omaha's mission is to transform and to improve lives locally, nationally, and globally. Today, we also wish to recognize the professionals whose daily work translate that mission into action and into impact. To the UNO faculty, whose talent and dedication fosters a culture of scholarship, reflecting the highest standards of quality and rigor, and to our remarkable UNO staff, whose spirit of service creates the supportive and caring environment in which all of our students thrive. We thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your commitment, your passion, and your talent with each and every student each and every day, particularly during these times. Today's graduating class is composed of more than 1,643 Mavericks, more than 1,000 newly minted UNO alumni who enter our community with new knowledge, skills, and equally, and maybe even more importantly, the maverick spirit of a can-do, high-energy approach and a strong set of community values. Of those graduating today, 375 are master's degrees and 20 are doctoral students. Some of you are native Nebraskans, some of you came to UNO from across the country, and some of you came from around the world. This class, your class, represents 37 states and 51 countries with 82 international students completing their degree today. Now for our international candidates, we are so proud to have you join the Maverick family. One reason of that pride is to lead this institution in UNO's commitment to our military, veteran, and dependent students, both those on campus, online, and overseas. For nine consecutive years in a row, the Military Times has named our university, has named UNO one of the top 10 universities in the nation for military-affiliated students. Today, we want to recognize all of the veterans and service members among our graduating class and to recognize your commitment to our freedom. For as we all know, freedom is not free. Thank you so much for your service. At UNO, we embrace your role as an anchor institution in our community, and we welcome you, all alumni, future mavericks, and visitors alike, to the campus for athletic events, concerts, lectures, and community meetings that will hopefully return in the near future. I also hope that you will return to our campus as lifelong learners, exploring the rich educational opportunities that our university has to offer. We are your University of Nebraska here in Omaha, and we look forward to being part of your lives for many, many years to come. To the class of 2020, thank you. Thank you for sharing this day with us. Thank you for partnering with us on your educational journey. I can't wait to see what you will do next. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, the honorary degree is the most prestigious honor that is bestowed by the University of Nebraska at Omaha. This honor is reserved for those who have rendered extraordinary service to the university, as well as the regional and the global community. Our recipient today is Mr. Samuel Bach. Mr. Bach is being honored with the Doctorate of Humane Letters for his innovative contributions to the field of higher education. Mr. Bach is a world-renowned artist and a Holocaust survivor. His works depict his personal story as well as history, telling vivid stories like no one else. 
His story begins in 1933 at Vilna, Poland. Shortly thereafter, Vilna was under Soviet and then German occupation from 1940 through 1944. Only he and his mother survived. His father and grandparents all perished at the hands of the Nazis. After World War II, Mr. Bach and his mother fled to the Landsberg Displaced Persons Camp. It was here that he was able to take his first painting lessons in Munich. Mr. Bach's artistic talent started when he was recognized at a very young age during an exhibition in the ghetto of Vilna, when he was just nine years old. After studying in Munich, he was able to attend prestigious art schools in Jerusalem and later in Paris. While in Paris, he received a grant from the America-Israel Cultural Foundation and pursued his artistic studies. He had his first exhibition in 1959 in Rome of abstract paintings, and in 1961, he was invited to show at an exhibition at the Carnegie International. Following that, he had a solo exhibition at the Tel Aviv Museum in 1963. During the time of these exhibitions, there was a change in his artistic preferences. This shift led Mr. Bach to paint in a style he called expressionism. In his work, Mr. Bach paints a vivid story of his personal life, of Jewish history, and of his Holocaust experiences. He has completed over 8,000 pieces and continues in his work up to today. This last September, Mr. Bach spent a week on our campus where he visited several different classes to talk about his experiences. He displayed 70 pieces of art in our Weber Fine Arts Building Art Gallery. Hundreds of people from Omaha and the surrounding communities as well as more than 1,500 middle and high school students came to the exhibit and saw his works. He also gave several radio interviews and public talks while on campus. And during an event at the Strauss Performing Arts Center on September 25th, Mr. Bach generously donated three of his original pieces to the University of Nebraska at Omaha. These works were donated in honor of three donor families, the Freed, the Schwab, and the Goldstein families, who have been long-term supporters here at UNO. We encourage all of you to come back to campus in the fall to see these displayed in our Chris Library. For his devotion to telling the story of people who can't, for Mr. Bach's dedication to using his platform to educate new generations, and for his embodiment of what we like to call the maverick spirit. The University of Nebraska at Omaha hereby bestows upon Mr. Samuel Bach the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, this eighth day of May, 2020, with all of the rights and the privileges thereto. Mr. Bach, thank you for all that you've done, and congratulations. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, members of the class of 2020, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you the most recent alumnus of our university, Mr. Samuel Bach, who will now make the 2020 commencement address. Mr. Bach, it's all yours. Dear friends, these are very challenging days. Fortunately, we live in times in which the technology allows me to record myself and to speak to you. And I'm not sure if the importance of today's event is within the limits of my vocabulary. I am at a loss for words. I know how meaningful it is to all of you, students, faculty. Imagine how meaningful it is to me to the recipient of the honorary doctorate of the university. It is so moving, it is so inspiring, and at the same time, humbling. Several months ago, my work was exhibited at the Fine Arts Gallery. It was seen by over 4,000, maybe 5,000 visitors. My art has arrived to Omaha thanks to the tireless efforts of 
Dr. Mark Chalinsak, held by Dr. Curtis Hutt, and the determinate support by Chancellor Jeffrey Gold, Vice Chancellor Sasha Kopp, and Dean David Booker, with helpers and donors whom I cannot mention here by name, all of them, but to all of them, my infinite, infinite things. What happened at the show was almost magical. A true symbiosis between my paintings and the souls of their beholders. Many of them were very young. Many arrived in special buses, which the university offered. The title of the show, Witness, the Art of a Holocaust Survivor. What the public discovered at first sight might have seemed strange, a faraway world in which alternative realities related more to icons of art history than to recent events. They showed a world filled with objects that had lost their familiar use. All this painted in a technique <laughs> that belonged to other times. Although my art spoke of a past that relates to sheer horror, the paintings were luminous, the colors bright, some scenes weren't even devoid of some irony or humor. To make all that possible, obviously, I chose to speak of my life and my world by means of symbols, icons, metaphors. A knowledgeable and dedicated docents help the visitor to comprehend the meanings of my images and learn the load of their story. The story of a world in which racism, intolerance, social injustice brought on a huge devastation and irreparable loss. The paintings hinted, obviously, at a world victimized by cataclysmic events. A world which, since it recovered about 75 years ago, had been licking and licking old wounds. In fact, a world of great need of repair and restoration. I hope that the public understood that I was trying to speak beyond my personal experience of the Holocaust. And I dealt with the substance of our human condition. In a nutshell, this is what I undertook to render in my art. My biography. 1933, I was born in Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. 1933, Hitler seized power in Germany. As said before, a survivor of the Holocaust, I carry in me indelible memories. Imagine, 95% of Lithuanian Jews were massacred in the three years of the Nazi rule. 250,000. Jews were the Lithuanian Jews before World War II. I am one of the surviving 5%. I was so very, very lucky to have been spared that cruel fate. Obviously, my life's work was determined by my miraculous survival. For me, the Holocaust is the foremost laboratory of human behavior. And it transcends the events of World War II. It tells us that man's capabilities are limitless, that the best and the worst exist in each one of us. Victims or perpetrators equally begin life as cute babies. But humanity, if not sufficiently alert, is apt to be victimized. 
to one degree or another. Victimized by dangerous individuals that life's distorted circumstances had created and then had them viciously promoted. And these circumstances, of course, as we all know, depend on economy, on education, on family, on values, on personal character, and on choices. Our choices that render people responsible. That is why I believe that the study of World War II, in all its complexity, in its global geography, in its cultural diversities, is most important. And all that in spite of its limitless and foreboding cruelty. I have often been asked, how have you survived? I was lucky, very lucky I say. But it is complicated if you want to know more, if you want to know what I think, read my book entitled Painted in Words. Luck, luck for one thing. I firmly believe that luck has a potential to which one can contribute. My parents did exactly that. They helped my luck. They tried to be informed, prepared. They were resourceful. Alas, a few days before our liberation, I lost my father, but my mother survived and she saved me. But most importantly, my mother couldn't have saved me without the help of Christians who were ready to save us at the risk of their own lives. These incredible heroes are an indispensable component of my personal life. Today we live in a world seized by the global upheaval of the coronavirus. It is packed with apprehensions, worries, dire hardships. It seems that the question of our species survival is at stake. When speaking of this situation, it is difficult to avoid common cliches. We are at a war against an invisible enemy. We are submerged by a tsunami of warnings and advice. We know that we must win that our lives shall continue in a world that is going to be very different. But different, I hope, in a positive sense. The opportunities are there. We are now witnessing incredible acts of heroic generosity, especially in the medical profession. People save people at the risk of their own lives. Courage, resilience, solidarity. Solidarity among individuals as well as among nations. More justice, more democracy, more equality, more humanism. We are not in a time of a second Holocaust. We know what goes on on the surface of the earth. People aren't isolated. The options of overcoming this crisis carry much, much promise. History in all its multifaceted aspects is the collective memory of humanity. Its lessons are priceless. Past errors, dangers, tragedies. Examining that present, reevaluated, could promise a better future. We have a lot to learn, a lot, a lot is now in the hands of the oncoming generations. One day, they shall determine where our society chooses to go. Humanity has never needed young, capable, enthusiastic and well-educated people as much. To all of them, to all of you, I send my very best wishes. Thank you. The Order of the Tower is awarded to individuals whose exemplary service and support have advanced the mission of the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Today, 
we are honored to recognize the Goldstein family for their contributions and support they have made in advancing UNO and human rights. The Goldsteins include Mr. Don Goldstein from Omaha, Gail Rasnick from Boulder, Colorado, and Kathy Goldstein from Pacific Grove, California. They were all raised here in Omaha, Nebraska by Leonard and Shirley Goldstein. Their parents established a lectureship on human rights with the UNO Religious Studies Department. After the passing of Mr. Leonard Goldstein, the siblings carried on his spirit and work of furthering the education, the community engagement, and research of human rights here at UNO. Together, the creation of the Goldstein Family Community Chair in Human Rights and the Leonard and Shirley Goldstein Center for Human Rights was established in January of 2018. This center is in the College of Arts and Sciences and is uniquely composed of over 30 affiliated faculty from five different colleges here at UNO. The Goldstein Center for Human Rights is faculty-governed, nonpartisan, nonsectarian organization that promotes the understanding of issues through teaching, through research, and through creative activity, as well as community engagement, both locally and globally. The Goldstein Center for Human Rights provides access to exceptional teaching through several different conferences and talks where our faculty share their experience with our students and others. It provides access to exceptional community engagement through archives and exhibits, such as Shirley Goldstein's Immigration Rights Legacy, the Freedom of Movement and Religion for Soviet Jews, which was shown in the Chris Library recently. This center also was a major contributor to Mr. Samuel Bach's visit to our campus last fall, leading to his inclusion in their annual lecture series, the Symposium on Art and Human Rights. This symposium featured scholars all across the United States, Europe, and South Africa. These experiences promote cultured discussion and panels for our students. The Goldstein children, Don, Gal, and Kathy, tirelessly work to continue the support of human rights in honor of their parents. In addition to their contributions here at UNO, they've also supported the University of Nebraska Medical Center, Bethel Synagogue, the Jewish Federation, and many more efforts throughout the Nebraska community. For this commitment and for their generous contributions to the education of human rights and the Omaha community, the University of Nebraska at Omaha bestows upon Mr. Don Goldstein, Mrs. Gail Rasnick, and Mrs. Kathy Ann Goldstein the Order of the Tower Award this 8th day of May, 2020, with all of the rights and the privileges thereto. Thank you and congratulations for all you do for UNO and our community. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chancellor's Medal is awarded to those individuals whose outstanding service to the University of Nebraska at Omaha has shaped the institution's course. Their dedication, commitment, and exemplary performance fuels UNO's incredible momentum. Today, we are able to recognize two such individuals, Assistant Vice Chancellor of Student Success and Dean of Students, Ms. Kathy Pettit, and the former Dean of the College of Business Administration, Dr. Lewis Paul. Ms. Kathy Pettit has been with the University of Nebraska at Omaha for 15 years. She has fully supported students and has led multiple units and initiatives across the campus and continues to have a transformative impact on our campus community. You will see her work in the Service Learning Academy, Counseling and Psychological Services Department, the Wellness Center, Academic and Career Development Center, and most recently, organizing and developing the new UNO Success Academies initiatives. Ms. Pettit also works with students on an individual level, ranging from situations such as mental health, classroom disruptions, family concerns, homelessness, and other extremely trying situations. 
And she always does this with professionalism, kindness, sensitivity, and with laughter. This kind of care requires her to be available outside of typical business hours, which means she often puts in long days and long hours during the week and on weekends. During the Scott Campus fire, she worked tirelessly to assist the students who were affected by this event. She helped to find them new accommodations, provided counseling during this very, very stressful time. Ms. Pettit also showed compassion to each student and was a positive influence in a very difficult situation. That situation, as well as many others, shows that Ms. Pettit is deserving of the 2020 UNO Chancellor's Medal. Congratulations, Kathy. Well deserved. Dr. Lewis Pohl joined the College of Business Administration at UNO in 1984. He became dean of this college in 2003, where he provided extraordinary and transformational leadership for the college. He made significant contributions to the growth and development of the entire campus as well. His connection and reputation amongst the business community is outstanding. And much of that is attributed to his can-do attitude in regard to collaboration. The success of the entrepreneurship program and collaboration science initiatives are two of these remarkable examples. Dr. Pohl's collaboration extended past a local level and moved into global partnerships with work in India, China, Germany, Finland, Austria, Belgium, and Romania. During his time in Romania, he was awarded an honorary doctorate from the Alexandru Aion Cruza University in Romania. He has documented his exciting work through his personal blog entitled The Traveling Dean. During his time of leadership, the College of Business Administration was accredited in both its business and accounting programs by the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, which fewer than 200 business schools worldwide can boast. It has also been rated as the number one business school in the U.S. for military veteran students and is able to distribute currently over $900,000 in scholarships to students. This growth of the College of Business Administration led to a new building in 2010, now known as Mammal Hall, and a new addition to the building to begin in 2019 to better support the needs of the students of our College of Business. Dr. Pohl's years of outstanding service to UNO demonstrates his dedication and service worthy of the UNO Chancellor's Medal. Lou, in recognition and appreciation of your leadership of our organization, contributions and expertise, and the long-standing service to UNO, it gives us great pride to bestow upon both Dean Kathy Pettit and Dr. Lewis Pohl the Chancellor's Medal this 8th day of May, 2020, with all of the rights and privileges thereto. Congratulations, and thank you so much, all that you have done. Hello, graduates. I'm Lee Danker, and I'm your alumni director. On behalf of the UNO Alumni Association, I'm pleased to extend congratulations to you, the class of 2020. Along with your diplomas, you have earned new titles today as you transition from UNO students to UNO alumni. More than a century ago, our first graduating class held its commencement ceremony. Those 11 graduates founded a network now with nearly 115,000 UNO alumni. You'll find them doing great things in Omaha, in our state, and all around the world. Many of your parents, your family members, colleagues, and friends are part of that alumni network. In fact, let me take a moment to speak to our alumni watching today. Please, graduates, take a moment to give your special graduate and all members of this class a shout out via social media with the hashtag UNO alumni. I know they'd appreciate hearing your notes of congratulations and your nice words. Now graduates, I ask you to continue your journey by staying connected with the Alumni Association. We're here for you and your association is free for all members. 
You'll receive messages, letters, and invitations from time to time, and I sure hope that we hear back from you. Your ongoing involvement with UNO makes this university stronger, so be a proud maverick for life. You did it, graduates. Congratulations. Hello, I'm Deborah Smith Howell, Associate Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs and Dean for Graduate Studies. It is my great pleasure on behalf of the graduate faculty to congratulate each of you receiving your graduate degree today. Completing a master's or doctorate degree always requires tremendous resilience and perseverance, which will continue to serve you well in these unprecedented times. I know this is not the ceremony you expected. Regardless of format, it is important that we honor your achievements at this time. Also, please remember that you are invited to participate in our planned December ceremonies. Commencement is one of those unique times when we think about the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. I hope you are thinking about your journey to your degree today, remembering the faculty, fellow students, family, and friends who supported you along the way. I hope you also find a way to celebrate this very moment of achievement and completion. You deserve a celebration. Also, keep looking forward to the journey ahead. The value of a graduate degree is much more than the letters after your name or a document on a wall. It is the intangible collection of personalized experiences, research, skills, and knowledge you have accumulated that empowers you to go contribute something greater. This has never been more important. Think back to when you decided to embark on a graduate degree. Remember your motivation and eagerness to challenge yourself? Remember the commitment you made and the determination that drove you. As you move forward, keep that same spirit. Remain motivated. Be passionate in all that you do. Continue to challenge yourself. As individuals with advanced degrees, you have more opportunity than ever to influence and impact the world around us. Some of you will continue your research. Some of you will make your mark in business, nonprofits, or government while others will make advancements in technology, science, public service, arts and culture, education, and humanities. No matter the discipline, you are and will continue to make a difference in the life of our community, state, and nation. We need your intellect, your experiences, and your passion. You graduate today, but commencement is not really about endings. It is about beginnings. Congratulations, graduates of the University of Nebraska at Omaha. We, the faculty and staff at UNO, are enormously proud of you. Remember, once a maverick, always a maverick. Go Mavs. Receiving today his Master of Arts in Sociology, Zachary Christo will speak on behalf of the class of 2020. Members of the Board of Regents, Chancellor Gold, distinguished faculty, esteemed fellow graduates, and honored family, friends, and guests. Congratulations and thank you all for allowing me to speak to you today. I am truly humbled and honored for the opportunity to address the May 2020 graduating class of the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Today is a very special day, and before I get started with my message, I would like to recognize the contributions of everybody who made this day possible. Faculty, staff, administration, family, friends, teachers, coaches, guardians, and mentors. We, the class of 2020, could not have done it without you. So thank you all for all you've done. For me, the years I've spent at UNO have been very impactful on my life. Dr. Oyenlade always says, to learn is to change and my time at UNO has changed me in many ways. I hope your time here has done the same for you. My experiences as a Maverick have made me into who I am today. In fact, I can say without exaggeration that my studies at UNO have directly contributed to the most important lesson I have ever learned about life, that the way we experience reality as individuals is the direct result of our thoughts, our attitudes, and our outlook on life. In sociology, we talk about something called the Thomas Theorem which essentially says that when humans define a situation as real, 
the situation becomes real in its consequences. It's similar to the self-fulfilling prophecy or the old saying, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. In my own life, I've experienced the uncomfortable yet empowering truth inherent in this idea that there are consequences associated not only with our actions, but with our attitude. When I was 12 years old, my family learned that my hero, my dad, was diagnosed with a degenerative neurological disorder called Huntington's disease, or HD. Huntington's has been described as a mix between uh, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and ALS. It's hereditary, meaning it's passed on through the genetic code. So I had a 50-50 chance of inheriting the disease myself. There is no cure, so you can't get tested for HD until you're 18 years old. I told myself that as soon as I turned 18, I would go get the test. Well, 18 came and went, and I began to struggle greatly with the decision about getting tested. On one hand, I needed to know about what my future held for my health, my career, my family, my future children. But on the other, I simply wasn't ready to face the music. So in the meantime, my way of dealing with the uncertainty was to just assume that I had the disease and plan for the worst case scenario. It was a prepare for the worst and hope for the best kind of strategy. When I got a little older and the gravity of the situation really started setting in, I started to feel anxious, depressed, and alone. I became completely immersed in self-pity and fear. Every time I forgot something or lost my train of thought, or if I would stumble, lose my balance, or feel a weird twitch in my extremities, as we all sometimes do, I would think, yep, there it is again. That must be the HD. The future seemed bleak, and it was the most challenging period of my life for my mind, body, and soul. Then one day, I began to feel grateful for this experience. I realized life is worth living with or without the disease, that my experience might someday be useful to others. I finally felt ready. I wasn't afraid anymore. So I set up the appointment and counted down the days. After months of waiting for the results, I sat in front of the doctor with that sealed envelope. This was the moment I had been waiting for, and I was ready for whatever was coming. So I thought. He pulled out the piece of paper, looked at it, and said, It's negative. You do not have the gene. You will not develop the disease. Needless to say, I was happy, but I was dumbstruck. Something just did not feel right. It didn't make sense. What about all the forgetfulness? What about the times I lost my balance or felt that weird twitch in my arm? What about all the anxiety and depression? If all this wasn't caused by this genetic abnormality that I thought I had, where did it come from? It came from me, my mind, my imagination. As the Thomas theorem stated, I defined the situation as real, and it became real in its consequences. From the age of 12 to summer 2018, I defined my situation in a negative way, and that definition came with negative consequences for my mind, body, and soul. Therefore, the opposite possibility must exist. If we define our situation in a positive way, then that definition will come with positive consequences. So if we want positive outcomes, we must make a conscious effort to help keep a positive outlook and help others around us keep a positive outlook as well. My story is a positive one, not just because I don't have Huntington's disease. My story would be positive with or without the disease because with the love and support of those around me, I made the decision before I even got tested to write my story in a positive way, no matter what came out of that sealed envelope. Next time you catch yourself catastrophizing or worrying about how something's going to turn out or whether it's a relationship, the job search, or a question about what to do next in life, remember that when people define a situation as real, the situation becomes real in its consequences. Your attitude is everything. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. So how will you, class of 2020, choose to tell the rest of your story. So with that, one final huge congratulations to the class of 2020 and to everyone who made this day possible. Thank you. Now we come to that part of the program you have eagerly awaited, the conferral of degrees. Chancellor, on behalf of the graduate faculty, it is my honor to present to you the candidates for graduate degrees. 
doctoral degree candidates have completed the requirements for the following degrees, Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Education, educational specialist candidates have completed the requirements in their respective fields of study. Master's degree candidates have completed the requirements in their respective fields of study for the following degrees. Master of Arts, Master of Arts for Teachers of Mathematics, Master of Science, Master of Accounting, Master of Business Administration, Master of Business Administration Executive MBA, Master of Architectural Engineering, Master of Music, Master of Public Administration, Master of Social Work. The graduate faculty takes pride in presenting these candidates to you for the conferral of the appropriate degree. Thank you. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of the University of Nebraska, I hereby confer upon you the degree doctorate educational specialist and master's degrees for which you've been recommended with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto. Congratulations. Claire Elizabeth Dyer. Lauren Joy Ohm. Ashley Kate Furneau. Magdalena Jo Steffen, Natalie Ann Nelson, Ryan Summerer, Prakruti Viswanath, O'Brien Nathaniel Chin, Lindsay Ellen Starman. Ellie Elaine Watkins. Blake M. Byer. Marvin Rowe. Kate Marie Wessels. Aaron Braunberger. David Ronald Schaefer II. David L. Brown. Carrie Volk. Ronald Ramirez Rodriguez. Michael Adam Knudsen. Andrea Nicole Boyd. Chelsea Marie Sprague. Victor R. Sunleaf. Jordan Kemp. Richard Lee Oski. Dr. Alexandra Marie Darrow. Amanda Sue Reffeld. Crystal Ishii. Kevin Michael Chersey, Juan Raimundo Barajas Dominguez, Veronica Lynn Botts, Sung Hoon Cha, Catherine Elizabeth Summers, Haley Nicole Melvin. Lauren Louise Davis. Don M. Frain. Dr. Nicole Marie Bynes. Christopher Curtis Winchester. Jeremy Robert Stoll. Evangelina Chavez Herrera. Jing Han Lee. Tukatha Pomakan. Zhang Wei Lu. Ronald Joseph Ganzi. Chingun Perevdagba. 
Megan and Mackie. Hector and Samani. Sarah Marie Calhorn Weiskop. Swetha Sanduhai Bailupala. Jennifer Allison Solheim. Lucas Perez Leahy. Logan Schroeder Seacrest. Kylan Butler. David Ingram. Manglin Q. Abby Marie Keel. Richard Andrew Kirsty. Jamie Ann Rett. Mariah Lynn Sugira. Kathleen Galvan Dowd. Sherry Nixon. Sean Michael Young. Dr. Chelsea S. Krebs. Brittany Dibert. Hodden Farah. Megan Luders. Sarah Elizabeth Martinez. Martin Eugene Neal. Samuel Harrison Underwood. Bailey Ann McGuire. Benjamin Andrew Slate. Seth Redwine. Melissa Ann Valentino. Andrea Nicole Coniglia Sayers. Adam Lauren Hansen. Patrick Hanlon. Kyle John Brozek. Mackenzie Lane Lahman. Ben Meister. Gari Chandra. MC Winter. Nicholas Ryer Flowling. Dr. Janet Alden Zom. Hussam Albulushi. Donald William Clark. Michelle Marie Jacklove. Abigail Grace Zimmerer. Meredith Lynn Butler. Sandra Dizdarovic. Kai Asha Sears. Lisa Hagen Webb. Diana Lynn Kappel. Stephen John Fogel. Victoria Aerosmith. Ashley M. Hall. Rebecca Christine Malik. Ingrid Giselle Rodriguez. Melissa Ann Cass. Nicholas Joseph McEntee. Taya Renee Zagurski. Christina Rimmelie. Paige Marie Osman. Christine Renee Clark. Diana Marie Arp. Haimiti Arfati. 
Colin Mathis Miller. Nicole Elizabeth Ashkoff. Kylie Ann Nielsen. Allison Therese Campy. Billy Koonsman. Maria Teresa Ortiz. Medjean Desgraves. Michelle Shell Suzanne McIntyre Brewer. Mitchell Allen Berry. Reagan Gaynor. Alexa Christine Van Hout. Bridgette Ann Halleck. Priyanka Chadhari. Brian W. Devine. Krista Murnane Teston. Caitlin Francis Bartlett. Devin W. Bergman. Michelle Kati Kusikos. Naomi Louise Yanni. James Nell Bryars. Jason Anthony Barnstead Long. Grace Aileen Maziner. Richard Branton. Jennifer Linden. Matkia Dion Montgomery. Lisa Marie Zilli. Tamar Diana Newman. Danielle Lynn Coyne. Alejandro Bustillos, Jr. Sarah Diane Meyer. Alex Michelle Nielsen. Hitesh Kumar Katari. Mackenzie Lingenberg. Kathleen Amber Skolka. Cody Amend. JC Laurel Henderson. Allison Marie Burns. Christopher Tobias Schmidt. Julie Sunny Matthew. Melissa M. Harrell. Rachel Clay. Megan Marie Springer. Kylie Joe Holman. Robert Edward Meyer. Benjamin J. Higgins. Michael J. Masgay. Anne-Marie Paula Taylor. Shelby Taylor Conant. Humna Yasmin Rashid. Mackenzie Elizabeth Conran. Kelsey Marie Harding. John Jeffrey Blackwell. Connor McCoy. Blake Stevens. Dr. Elizabeth May Gillespie. Sarah Elizabeth Papa. Tanner Chilson. Jackson Paul Urrutia. Nadia Danielle Elshami. Kinsey Leans Jurgens. 
Michael William Wenzel. Zachary J. Christo. Gregory Bennett Beltzer. Alexandra Langley Ward. Catherine N. Porto. Christina Joy Cole. Morgan Blair Hermanek. Shanti Nataraj Thangavel. Brooke Ashley Jack. Thomas J. Holler. Alexandra J. Inselman. Katherine Nelson. Dr. Paige Cherie Gill. Megan Grace Morrissey. Molly Grace Hauger. Stacy Bigler. Megan Brown. Jennifer Marie Johannek. Chloe Olivia Bortinger. Kelsey Buglowitz Miller. Chelsea Ray Howerton. Christine Ballas. Whitney Marie Sandine. Reagan Ann Rodriguez. Aaron Jesse Mason. Stephanie Nicole Leesham. Tobias Kernberg. Olajidi Cotero Cooper. Christina Maria Caniglia Nelson. Dr. Ming Xie. Jacob Scott Marsh. Mayatha Dal Jamil Al Nafli. Joseph Burbach. Christopher Levin Collins. Myra Guzman. Allison Michelle Schramm. Ali Mutujabi Al Lawati. Hassan Abdallah Al Matrud. Daisy Haglund. Kevin Michael O'Connell. Amy Jo Reed. Morgan Lee Starman. Michaela Ann Van Morlegum. Lindsay L. Augustine. Aaron Elise Painter. Jacques Musavimana. Cabal Lowell. Lynette Yvonne Kramer. Jonah Sandin. Alexis Morgan McCoy. Megan Dinsmore. Cassandra K. Rathman. John Voigt. Sai Kumar Bilkmala. Dr. Xi'an Gao. Catherine Teresa Vacha. Talon Michael Flynn. Hannah Grace Brown. Halid Gorgon Kelnick. Aiden E. Quinn. 
Jonathan Michael Ingram. Stephanie Christina Pauser. Emilia Getzford. Visheka Tamrakar. Ashley Kristen Durdick. Sarah Marie Rybar. Nathan Avery Schmidt. Tiffany Lassick. Ryan Thomas Lankin. Rebecca Suzanne Murray. German Graz. Socorrito Salcido Rodriguez. Ashley Ellen Nagel. Juhana Ahmed Mohammed Al Nabani. Megan Anley Olson. Nandina Maria Jaya Chandri. Haley K. Jurek. Jennifer Aaron Briggs. Tara DeShaney. Janelle Lynn Schaefer. Emily Jean McCann. Ashley Marie Steffes. Kelsey Simone or Stevenson. John Douglas Gardner. Dina Marie Pearson. Fabian Pescaler. Haley Elizabeth Chatterbuck. Nicole Cordell. Michael Fetchy. Catherine Marie Williams. Lindsay K. Hall. Danielle Kluver. Maria Cristina Jimenez. Holden Keith Ray. Dr. Bungwoo Shine Cho. Taylor Tremaine Pensick. Abdiasis M. Osman. Chu Hong Jung. Gregory Edward Smith. Allegra Jane Harden. Brianna Nicole Kruper. Jacob William Dewey. Rachel Lubisher. Jacob David Campbell. Anita Saminadin. Stephanie P. Vandermeulen. Noor Saleh Abdullah Al Baharani. Don Marie Kane. Alexandra Marie Steeren. Dr. Lisa Marie App. Claire Nicole Phillips. Haley Renee Stroud. Josephine Ray Swoboda. Patrick Norton. Zacchaeus Franklin Dahl. Daniel James Patterson. Melissa Marie Lampy. Jessica Lynn Bailey. Shannon Lynch. Kelsey Lane Stitham. 
Erica Marie Lutz. Dr. Christine Nicole Hafner. Dr. Tessa Kate Peterwright. Mitranj M. Pansuria. David Uwinganji Gatetti. Mitchell Thomas Zelesnik. Thuraya Alwashi. Marie J. Wynn. Madison Clute. Andy Michelle Walter. Hannah Christine Martin. Kyle William Jones. Morgan Mary Marinin. Benjamin Daniel Stadola. Samantha Joe James. Sai Teja Sirivolu. Stephanie Rose Palmer Matakowski. Tara Teresa Bodlack. Sarah Catherine Clausen. Anya M. Edwards. Bennett John Riley. Caitlin Margaret Swearingen. Bianca Michelle Pearson. Caitlin Marie Campbell. Brendan Sheehy. Hannah Marie Morose. Jeffrey Jersak Bierman. Allison Marie Keller. Hannah Elaine Kaliga. Elizabeth Sarah Brower. Allison Kimberly Phillips. Jared J. Anthony. Tori Barnes. Emily Llewellyn Lytle Smith. Jordan Ford. Andrew Christopher Heathoff. Madeline Elizabeth Blaha. Dr. Danielle Nicole Essler. We thank you for joining us today in this celebration. Though our nation is in the midst of an unprecedented period, we wanted so very much to recognize you today and confer your degrees. Copies of your degrees will be delivered to you in due course. In addition, if your schedule allows, we hope you will join us back on campus in either homecoming weekend or in Baxter Arena in December for a special commencement to be held for our spring 2020 graduates. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2020. And remember to always do all the good you can for everyone you can, whenever you can and wherever you can. Once a maverick, always a maverick.
Go, man!